Grace, peace, and mercy are yours from God the Father, through his Son, Jesus Christ, and by their Spirit. Amen. Our text is the Gospel from Luke chapter 3. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to call you Father and to be at peace in your presence because you come to us through your Son, Jesus, our Redeemer. By your Spirit, open our eyes that we may see and believe wonderful things revealed in your scriptures for us, for our learning, that we may glorify your name through Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, on this baptism of our Lord first Sunday after the Epiphany, Eliam had to step aside. He wasn't the Lord's anointed there in Jesse's house. Shammah had to step aside. Seven of the brothers, sons of Jesse, all had to step aside for the youngest among them, who had to come in out of the field, wash up, and get ready for the sacrificial celebration for his anointing to be the king after Saul, who had disappointed the Lord through rebellion and was rejected from being king, David would take his place. If you had the bulletin, you'd see that the theme for this sermon is step aside, step aside for Jesus. Our gospel begins with a, giving us a glimpse of the ministry of John. John, son of Zechariah and Elizabeth. His birth played somewhat of a part in the birth of our Lord, didn't it? Gabriel coming to Mary. Excuse me, Gabriel coming to Zechariah in the temple and telling him that he and his wife Elizabeth would have a son in her old age. And that this son would be the forerunner, the harbinger of the Lord Jesus to prepare the people, as Malachi said he would. I wonder how much Time, these parents, these senior citizen parents had to influence their boy, bringing him up in the training and instruction of the Lord. I bet they knew their days were numbered, and they seized the opportunity that they had. And among the things that they taught John would have been that he had been prophesied by Malachi and Isaiah. Uniquely, no other prophet of the Old Testament, and he was an Old Testament prophet, ushering in the new. No other Old Testament prophet had been prophesied. The only other individual prophesied was great David's greater son, the Lord Jesus himself. And so the word came to John, the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth, and he went out by the Jordan in Judea, preaching and baptizing a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And he did it in such striking fashion with that um, strange selection of clothing, hair shirt, and diet, locusts and wild honey. But the voice of which Isaiah spoke, crying out in the wilderness, that voice, preaching repentance in the form of imagery. Get rid of that boisterous pride of yours. Pride in self. Pride in accomplishments. Pride in things of which you dare not boast. And when he had broken the people with the law, when the Holy Spirit had broken their pride through those words, Lift up the balance. Don't despair. Right here, through me, God's servant, is forgiveness of sins and the washing of your baptism. John points to the fact that he came with water baptizing. And it was so striking. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might be the Christ. So the people who were coming from all over the place were wondering as they watched and listened 
if this might be the one Israel has been waiting for for centuries and millennia. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of his sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. I am not worthy, says John. I need the same Christ you need. I am a sinner as you are, and we must all stand humbly before the one whom I am preparing you to meet. I baptize you with water. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Think of that. The ministerial work that the church has to do is the Lord's work. It is he, the Holy Spirit, who comes through water, wheat, wine, and word to reach into our hearts without destroying them. If he came in all his glory, a fiery glory, we would perish in the encounter. But here we are instead saved as we listen to the word of Christ, as we remember our baptism and celebrate it every day, on this day especially. The Lord is in our hearts in a saving way. And that's how John describes the ministry he had been given as the church has been given. A baptism which is a water charged with the forgiveness of the gospel. John says, don't delay that. Just because water is pleasant and fire is furious, don't delay it. This is the day of salvation. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is the time to seek him and find him where he wants to be found in the promises of baptism, in the promises of the forgiveness through absolution in a service. In these ways, we know where God is present among us and his spirit is at work among us. John says, don't delay. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather his wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Think about that. The clock is ticking. The last day is the next thing we speak of in the Apostles' Creed. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead, the quick and the dead, we used to say, believers and unbelievers. There will be a separation when the Son of Man appears in all his glory on the last day. Those who have died will not, not be able to press the snooze alarm and say, I'd rather to keep on sleeping, nor those in their beds. All will be gathered by the angels to one place to be separated as chaff from the wheat. How different that appearing of our Lord will be from the way he appeared among us at that time. The same town, outside that town, not even in the village, but out in the countryside at night. Angels announcing it to shepherds, the lowest class among them. How humbly he arrives. He arrives on a mission of salvation. And then about 30 years later, he puts one sandal foot in front of the other and arrives at the Jordan for entry into public ministry through baptism. Jesus will return, and we are made ready for that return through the means of grace, whereby he encounters us with forgiveness. Now is that day of salvation. The very next will be the winnowing for separating chaff from wheat. And so let's get the spirit day by day through his word and our baptism's promises. Let's not despair ever because of the sins that we have done, but trust we are forgiven and therefore children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Peter exhorted thousands on the day of Pentecost by saying, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God. Now the second half of our text. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. All the people. One, somewhere in the Gospels it says 
all this hyperbole, all the people came out to John. There were just many who wanted to see this person who had never cut his beard or hair. He was a Nazareth who wore camel's hair for clothing. Looked so rugged, but he had that message. People were coming, and they must have had to stand in line. Even though John's disciples also did baptizing, it took a while. And as they stood in line, those who wanted to be baptized, Jesus appeared and waited his turn. Do you think anyone gave way to Jesus or said nothing you both know? One by one. How did those who were baptized react when this happened? As Jesus was praying at his baptism, heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. If I had been there, I would have been ashamed that I had not recognized my creator and Lord. The one who really is the one we were waiting for revealed by the Father, both from heavens torn open by this event, and a spirit, the spirit, descending in the form of a dove. And now we know. And a voice declaring him to be so, the Son of God. I'd be embarrassed at my obtuseness that I had missed it in advance. It still happens. Regularly, we sit down to a meal together or in our homes and pray, come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. And, and we dig in and we talk and we maybe say things we shouldn't have and act as we shouldn't, as though Jesus weren't there. And we didn't yield again to the fact that he is present among us as he is here to word and promise. He is the one who gives us a beating heart and breathing lungs, rest at night, recovery for this new day. And we go on thinking nothing of it, taking it for granted as it is so regular. <clears throat> but it isn't unusual that these things should happen for us. It is our Lord Jesus who is with us. And we wouldn't step aside from our routine in order to say thanks. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. This is my question, my theological question for you this morning. Why was Jesus in the water? You may have heard me allude to an answer, but I think there are three or four biblically correct answers to that question because there's many facets to this beautiful event. But this is epiphany. Epiphany means reveal. Ah, the light goes on. Now I see. And something is said or shown or made clear about Jesus. A beloved early in this Epiphany season gospel for this season of the year, once every three years, is John chapter 2. It might be next Sunday's or next year's. John chapter 2, we're in Cana of Galilee. And the first miracle, as John numbers them, what happens with the wine. 150 to 180 gallons of water becomes wine at the creative power of Jesus. Not many people understood. The taste master of this banquet didn't know where that came from, but the disciples knew. And when they saw that, John says, in this way, Jesus epiphanied in the Greek revealed his glory, and the disciples put their faith in him. They wouldn't let him out of their sight. What's the epiphany here at Jesus' baptism for us to see today? This event is recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John's gospel just alludes to it, makes reference to it. What I see in Luke is that Jesus stood with those who were coming to be baptized. He linked arms, as it were, with us sinners. And 
he would do so in such a way that we can't imagine. God laid on him the iniquity of us all. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. To experience the shame and guilt of sins he never committed. Ours. And in this baptism, he enters into a ministry which would take him from that point in location all the way to outside Jerusalem, the cross. And there in his body, pay through suffering and a willing death the guilt of our sin. That glorifies Jesus as the God who loves us. The God who from eternity found the way, whose way the Father's Son said, I'll do that. Here is an epiphany for us of the Lord Jesus' great love, that he would step aside from heaven's glory into our world that we have ruined, his world that we have ruined, to redeem us, to set us free through death and resurrection from the devil's shenanigans and deceptions and lies that have entrapped everyone else to set us free from those things that had snared us and to set us free to live for him. And that's what we're here to do. In this house, to listen, and in our homes, to show his love to one another. And in this world, to proclaim his glory to the ends of the earth. That's the season of the we step aside for Jesus when we set aside this hour on a day of worship to give our dutiful attention to his word, to honor him in prayer and praise, and in that way to show him our Lord. We step aside for Jesus when we make sure that not just in the epiphany season, but throughout the church year, we are looking for opportunities to send his name to the ends of the earth not just in the epiphany season, but all the time, proclaiming that the Lord has come. We do that with our generous offerings here in worship, maybe through twice as nice, I heard that today, is that the name of the, a place where purchases actually go to support, what, Lakeside Lutheran High School? And um, gifts to Lutheran Preparatory School, of whatever nature, to help more and more young people consider preparing and be prepared to get ready for public ministry, which we certainly need many more of today. We step aside for Jesus when we see that he is among us in word, in the bread and wine of his body and blood in Holy Communion and in the water of Holy Baptism. Baptism which changed us from children of this world to the children of God that we are. May God grant this fruit to our meditation this morning. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let's confess the Apostles' Creed. That's on page 41. 